my fascination with true crime really began with books. Now I'm a big reader anyway. I always have been. I'm proudly a bookworm, but no category am I more invested and interested in than the genre of true crime and more recently white collar true crime novels and books. So before we get into the rest of the video, if you're new here, hi, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Jenny and typically I talk about true crime cases, but welcome to the first official session of my true crime book club, which will be an ongoing feature on my channel from now on. So if you're interested in books, if you're interested in true crime, then I highly recommend you subscribe. But if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine. Just grab a drink, have a sip, and we'll just chill and chat. So the first book on our list today, I actually read it on my Kindle and I am working on growing my true crime book collection, like the physical book collection. I'm trying to find as many as I can from thrift stores and secondhand shops and online on Trade Me, which is kind of like our New Zealand version of eBay, I suppose. And I've actually found, I've had a lot of success. I, uh, I, I found a couple that I'll share with you soon that I'm very pleased with myself about, but one that I'm still seeking out online uh, is Devil's Knot. So I read it on my Kindle and you can see the cover here and it's about the West Memphis Three. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the West Memphis Three case, this is just a quick summary. The book came out in 2002 and it's about the 1993 murders of three eight-year-old children and the subsequent trials of the three teenagers who were charged and convicted of the crimes. And these these boys who were charged and um, convicted were Damien Eccles, Jason Baldwin, and Jesse Miss Kelly, who would later become known as the West Memphis Three. Now, the book really stems on the crimes as it happened, the way that the police conducted their investigation, and the trial of the boys. But what was most shocking is how little actually there was no evidence to even support the charges brought against those three boys and they were juveniles at the time and yet they were actually found guilty and sentenced to death now this book honestly is a very 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 harrowing read so major major trigger warnings ahead of it if uh, to be honest like definitely read with caution and take care of yourself and just be very aware that it's very upsetting not only because of the actual crimes that took place I generally like to avoid crimes that involve children because it's horrendous um, but I did make an exception for this one because the story is so high profile and I have seen the movie the book was actually yeah later adapted into a movie starring, starring Colin Firth and Reese Witherspoon but I wanted to read the book to get like a better understanding of what took place and the crimes were not the only very upsetting and you know distressing element of the story the way that those three boys were railroaded and scapegoated that was that was very upsetting as well so please just if you're going to read it be very take care of yourself but anyway I thoroughly I thought the book was an excellent book and it was a very thorough account I enjoyed how the author did not hold back and really identifying the holes in the investigation and the corruption behind everything so it was fantastic however I would love her to do a revised edition because it's been so many years since this book came out it came out in 2002 it is now 2023 and a lot has changed since the story was written so basically when this book ends the three have been found guilty and they've been sentenced but in 2011 they were all released after signing an Alfred plea. Damien Eccles has spoken a lot about his experience so I would really like to read a, a, an updated version of the story with additional chapters on what has happened in the 21 years since this story first came out. But yes definitely a good one probably considered a classic or a modern day classic but would love some extra meat. I think you could just about 
double the size of the book based on everything that's happened around this case since it first came out. Book number two, and I managed to get this one secondhand on Trade Me, and I was so happy. I actually listened to the audiobook of this, but loved it so much. Well, I say loved it, but in, enjoyed it so much that I wanted to get my hands on a physical copy, but it is impossible to find. And yet I got one for like $6 on Trade Me. So the next book is The Road to Jonestown, Jim Jones and the People's Temple, and it's written by Jeff Gwynn. And it's a pretty meaty edition. It's a, it's a decent sized book. I think the audio book is like 20 hours long, but oh, this was excellent. I thought it was such a thorough account of everything that happened. And what I really enjoyed about the way that the book was structured is that the author did a very good job of setting the story up to demonstrate why Jim Jones amassed the following that he did. Because obviously if you think about what happened in the end, it would be impossible to fathom how anybody could get sucked into joining such a cult or a group or whatever. But he didn't, start off as an insane murderous dictator on day one. If you are unfamiliar with what happened or if you're unfamiliar with the Jim Jones story, essentially, this is like a short snippet from the back, The Road to Jonestown is the definitive account of Jim Jones in the tragic events at Jonestown, the largest murder-suicide in American history. Based on newly released documents and new interviews with survivors, some of whom had never spoken publicly before, it answers the question, how could so many people not only die for Jim Jones, but kill for him too? And it really does, it really does that. This is a magnificent piece of investigative journalism and exhaustive research. I, I really found this to be very compelling and it will be a book that I refer back to over and over in the future I'm sure because it is truly a fascinating case study into human psychology and cults and leadership and oh, I could go on but mm, if I had to give this one a rating I would truly give it a five out of five yeah it was that good truly now on to the next book and I'm actually still reading it. I'm almost finished and to be honest, it has been so hard to pull myself away from this book and actually just conduct any day-to-day -day activities. Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. <sighs> you guys. I'm not even finished, I'm nearly finished, but this is already like, a 10 out of five stars in my in my mind. I have enjoyed this so much. It is such a page turner. It is so gripping. It reads like a thriller novel, like I cannot put it down. Now, if you don't know what it's about, it is about Harvey Weinstein and the efforts of Ronan Farrow as he was conducting an investigative report. He was a journalist working as a reporter at, the, at NBC at the time. He started reporting on the story and realized what a huge, 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 huge story this was. But as he continued to conduct his investigations and gather damning evidence that was indisputable, he very oddly kept getting shut down at every single turn by people who he thought he could trust within the media agent in the media industry. And so this book is an account of his investigation, interviews with the incredibly brave women who had the courage to put their name next to these claims. And honestly, thank God they did. Who knows how many innocent women they had saved just by speaking out. But oh, you guys, this is just so good. This might just be my book of the year and it's only April. I know, but ugh. Just a little update here from post-production Makeup Free Jenny. I just finished this book and oh, I don't even know how to summarize how much I enjoyed this. You guys, it was so good. And this is definitely, mm, it might even 
knock my my number one my numero uno bad blood off the top of my list as being my favorite true crime book of all time this was so great and although it is largely about the investigation into harvey weinstein and his terrible crimes it, that is actually just kind of the catalyst of what became a much bigger and more shocking scandal and investigation into the media industry as a whole and how it so kind of aids and abets men like Weinstein to commit their crimes and what oh, it's such a satisfying finish throughout the course of reading it I was so frustrated because there were just so many terrible people and horrible things being done and just oh, so unjust but you gotta you gotta trust the process because man I am god I wish I could I wish I could read it again for the first time it's one of those ones so yeah mm, love it 10 out of 10 5 out of 5 on Goodreads, definitely pick this one up. And also, just, oh, I could talk about it forever, but a little sidebar, and a bit of a spoiler, but the uh, people who wind up looking the worst out of this, you might think it's Harvey Weinstein, and yes, he's trash. We all know he's trash. He's trash. But there are other trash people who are as trashy because of their complicit, complicitous, complicit, because of how complicit they were and how they aided and abetted his crimes. So yeah, a lot of trash people in this story. I just read it please because they're not in jail, but in the court of public opinion, we find them guilty. Another book I just finished reading and actually my favorite genre of true crime book to read is actually white collar crime. I love white collar crime. I just can't get enough. It is so fascinating to me how people manipulate the system for their own gain, right? So as you know, one of my GOAT books from the last video is Bad Blood. We're gonna talk about that one in just a second. But I just finished reading Billion Dollar Whale, The Man Who Filled Wall Street, Hollywood, and the World. And it's written by Tom Wright and Bradley Hope. And they are, I believe, investigative reporters for the Wall Street Journal. This one is about Joe Lowe, who was this billionaire, financier, prince, had all this inheritance, like family wealth and money, who was splashing cash all over Hollywood and rubbing elbows with everyone's finest. He was a Chinese Malaysian. Nobody had ever heard of this guy before. He was like best buds with Leonardo DiCaprio. He actually funded the production of The Wolf of Wall Street and started to draw attention to himself because everyone was like, who the F is this guy? Like this really kind of average looking banker that nobody had ever heard of before who had billions of dollars in cash. And people would say that the key red flag for so many is that the way that Joe Lowe spent money is not the way you would spend money that you had earned. Like he did not own that money. And it turns out that he actually really didn't own that money. He masterminded a $4.5 billion, US billion dollar fraud in what is now referred to as the 1M, One Malaysia Development Burhard Scandal. Billion Dollar Whale chronicles the exploits of Malaysian fugitive businessman Joe Lowe, wanted by authorities internationally for his connection with the 1M scandal. It describes how Lowe manipulated former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak into creating a sovereign wealth fund that raised $10 billion and how half of the raised funds eventually disappeared into Lowe's pockets and into ridiculous bottles of champagne. The book sheds light on the lax oversight that allowed Lowe to go siphon out such large amounts of money to finance his lavish lifestyle. It also details his time in the United States and his relationship with Gulf Arab royalty and Hollywood actors among others. Low is the whale referred to in the book's title. The term refers to a high roller, which is a gambler who consistently wages large amounts of money. If you're interested in white collar crime, this one is definitely one to read. This is one of the bigger scandals and unfortunately the 1M scandal has permanent, like for generations, has affected 
the Malaysian people because it's put this country so far into debt that now it's going to be an issue that these innocent people in Malaysia have to deal with and will suffer reduced resources because of. So it didn't just screw over rich people, it actually screwed over everyday people like you and me. And that is super shitty. And they also never caught Joe Lowe. <laughs> He's still at large. So F that guy. Now I rated this book four stars and it's a solid four stars. Four and a half, we'll round it up to four and a half. Now just to bring it back to my favorite white collar crime book, there, oh, I walked into my favorite bookshop the other day, which is this cute little, tiny little privately owned bookstore just up the street from me. It's kind of like a local institution. And what did I see upon the new release table, but just freshly hot off the press, a newly updated version of my absolute goat. So yeah, I actually already had a copy of the original Bad Blood but I was amazingly, I was actually able to exchange it because I, when I read Bad Blood, I read it on my Kindle and I had wanted to buy the physical edition because it's so fantastic. It's definitely a reread. And I just bought it like the physical copy like two weeks ago. And then I saw on the weekend that there was a new version and I was like very sad that I had just missed out. So this one, I was able to exchange it, which is just great. This one has an updated afterword from 2023. So it's just come out and it will be, I am yet to read it. So when I do, I will give you an update, but essentially I'm expecting it will cover the trials of Elizabeth and Sunny. And hopefully, I don't know when it ends, but hopefully there's subsequent sentencing because that would be very satisfying to see everything tied up in a neat little bow. So we'll let you know how I go with this one. So I guess that kind of brings me to the next part of our little book club video, which is books I'm excited to read next. And I'd love for you to read along with me. So if you want to partake, then let me know which books you're excited to read down below and what your thoughts are. And we can kind of have a little chat in the comments, but I picked up a few new ones from my bookstore and I'm very excited. So just the other day, again, my favorite little local haunt, I saw this one on the New Zealand nonfiction table, which shock and horror, nothing that exciting ever lands on a New Zealand nonfiction table. So I was very excited when I saw this book. And I thought, the deal's here, can't it? Looks interesting. Now, I have never heard of this case before, right? Just listen to this blurb, because you will freak, right? Okay. <clears throat> The Rorimu Massacre, as it came to be known, happened on the 8th of February 1997 and saw six everyday New Zealanders die. Another four were left with serious gunshot injuries, and they and many others live today with deep psychological scars. Now listen to this. In Steve's own words, learn how he found himself at the nucleus of events that day. He shot dead his father and five friends of the family, Floridly psychotic at the time, he would later be found not guilty by reason of insanity. In the lead up to the deaths in the 26 years since, Steve remembers everything. He has had to find ways to live with what has happened. His walk has brought him into contact with many others, both in mental health circles and in the community, and each has been able to teach him something. This is a rare insight into the mind of another. Steve lets us into his thoughts before, at the time, and after the shootings on that day. Now, if that is not a compelling reason to read a book, then I don't know what is. I am very excited to read this. This is next on my list. I will keep you posted, and I'll probably do a case on it afterwards because it's very interesting. I've not done one from such an angle before, especially as he is kind of starting that conversation himself. So stay tuned. Now this next one has kind of slipped under the radar for me. I'm actually really surprised I've not heard of it before, especially given it's like celebrity association, but this one, Furious Hours, Murder, Fraud, and the Last Trial of Harper Lee, who, if you don't know, is the author of the classic book, To Kill a Mockingbird. So 
saw that and I was like, huh, I actually found this on a discount table. So I got it for like 10 bucks, which feels like a very good deal. And I picked it up and read the back and this is the short blurb. Reverend Willie Maxwell, a rural preacher, was notorious. Accused of murdering five members of his family in the late 1970s, he was shot dead in front of 300 mourners at a victim's funeral, and the state of Alabama is consumed. America's most famous author, Harper Lee, wants this true crime tale for herself, but as she watches the Reverend's killer stand trial and she burrows deep into this town, the story slips through her fingers. This is the story Harper Lee wanted to write, and this is the story of why she couldn't. So, I gotta know what the F happened. Why couldn't she write it? Why did the story slip through her fingers? And what the heck happened for a reverend to shoot up his whole family? So this one's on my list as well. And it, I've seen like quite a few true crime best lists, like true crime, best true crime book list that kind of have this one like pretty high up there. So I am quite surprised I haven't heard of it before. It was published in 2019, so just kind of slid on through my fingers, I guess. And finally, on this mega list of books to read, will she get through them all? I don't know. I'm actually also listening to a book about the Panama Papers on um, audiobook. I've just started it today. That's not even what I was gonna say next, but that's, this is what I'm also listening to, Secrecy World, another white collar crime one. For some reason I just like listening to the white collar crime ones on audiobook, but, um, this is another white, white collar crime book that I have got lined up and it is called The Hard Sell, Crime and Punishment at an Opioid Startup, written by Evan Hughes. Now this one, quick read of the blurb, in the early 2000s, a brilliant but eccentric scientist, John Kapoor, developed a fentanyl-based painkiller that was as addictive as it was effective. Eager to capitalize on his success, he recruited a ruthless and avaricious team who left no stone unturned in pushing the potent dr drug on the market. Kapoor's company became a Wall Street sensation. That is, until insiders reached their breaking point and blew the whistle. With colourful characters and true suspense, The Hard Sell lays bare the pharma playbook. Evan Hughes offers a bracing look at how opioids are sold at the point they first enter the national bloodstream in the doctor's office. Now, I, have fe I feel some kind of way about opioids and drugs in general. I have a personal story, not of opioids, but of a... Um, a neurological drug that has kind of ruined my life, which maybe I'll share with you at some point. But any time I hear about doctors prescribing something that the patient has not been adequately informed about, cannot make an informed decision, or that the doctor doesn't understand enough in terms of when the patient might want to stop taking it, I'm very interested. Definitely invested in this, ready to read it. I'm looking forward to it. It's rated really well on Goodreads. When I first saw this, I wondered if it was related to the Sackler family, because there's a book called Empire of Pain about them and their terrible things that they did. But it sounds like it's actually a different company. So there is more terrible people out there trying to ruin everyone's lives to make money, which is just fabulous. I will be back with another case video next week. And it's I have so many, oh my goodness. I feel like after my big time off, I had a lot of stories that I got kind of halfway through that I am picking back up and there are so many that I want to cover and I'm looking at how I can continue to improve the storytelling and, and really do them justice. So have another big one coming and a few in the pipeline. As you know, the crew murders, that's on my list too, but I'm always open to suggestions so let me know your thoughts down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next video. Bye.